can take our farm, but they can't take our freedom. No, that's not it. It's, it's not? That's not the line. Come on, say it right. What line? You know. With a whole lot of power comes a heck of a lot of responsibility. There it is. Every little thing she does. Boy, is that a mouthful. Pretty awkward that we're just now making another Starlight episode near the end of the season, so this had better be serviceable. Twilight and Starlight are practicing magic when Twilight brings up how Starlight has been behind on her friendship lessons. To make up for this, Starlight is tasked with doing hobbies with the other main six while she's out doing princess stuff. Feeling self-conscious about being able to handle this task, Starlight decides to use a magic spell to make things easier. But the result is turning the main six into brainwashed zombies with blind stares, completely void of their free will. Starlight decides to go with this anyway, thinking that she's got this, but she's anything but got this when the side effects of the spell result in complete disaster. I have the feeling that the staff don't think much of Starlight Glimmer considering that she's had very small presence this season. That's not a good thing, and especially if she's supposed to be a new main character, as well as Twilight's student. And considering this is one of the last remaining episodes this season, the idea of having her being the main character of an episode at this point feels annoying. But the episode is here now, so how does it actually fare? Well, for an episode in a Slice of Life series, it's fairly standard, and I can't say that it does much wrong except for some repetitive moments. I actually think it's cool that the episode begins with Twilight and Starlight practicing their magic, as it's a fun way to start the episode and keep the viewer's attention. It is questionable that these magic spells make Twilight and Starlight seem way too overpowered, which kind of breaks the master and student tone that it goes for. But it's still a good idea to start off with, and it gives the writers a chance to mess around with their magic abilities to express what the characters are capable of. Starlight, while I can't say her conflict is all that compelling, still goes through a fairly interesting dilemma in this episode, and she's characterized fairly well. At no point was she being stupid or oblivious, she was just being naive. She has a very low understanding of social interaction considering that she's only made one really close friend since moving to Ponyville and has never really been seen interacting with the other characters openly. She relies on her magic because it's something that she's more familiar with, and she sees it as a way of getting out of using a life skill that she's not experienced in. It really shows how nervous and inexperienced she is when she has her small panic attack, and when she's having a hard time juggling so many problems at once. I guess you can say that she was being stupid and that she was acting on instinct instead of trying to do something the way Twilight would have wanted her to do it, but the chaos that follows still makes for an important lesson for her to learn. Another thing that I like about this episode is how the main six are portrayed. Even after they're turned into wide-eyed zombies who conform to everything Starlight says, their personalities still seem to shine through. Their way of talking as well as select customs that they're associated with are still there. Unfortunately, this can get a little repetitive. A lot of the episode's humor stems from how Starlight interacts with these brainwashed versions of these characters, and not much is done with it outside of some typical exchanges. It feels like they're trying to tell a joke, but there's too much transition between which character Starlight is talking to to really make them stick. And with the entire second act consisting of this, it feels like a huge chunk of the episode went in a big circle not really going anywhere until the disaster ends up hitting Starlight. Also, there is this really unfortunate implication concerning the very fact that Starlight does use a magic spell that literally strips everyone of their free will, as well as making them do whatever someone tells them to do. At first it may seem charming, but when you really think about it, it could qualify as dark magic. Could you imagine what could be done to someone if this spell fell into the hands of someone who'd use it for, I don't know, evil? And the way that all these spell books are lined up in the library like this gives me the impression that a book with a spell like this was very common for Twilight to find. 
Can anyone use this spell? And if so, how would they use it? Do they understand the danger that could accompany a spell with effects so questionably disturbing? Oh god, the implications! But the episode still has some other good things in it to support it and balance out its flaws. Spike takes his previous experience interacting with Starlight and tries to provide some reasoning into her methods to keep her head straight. And he also expresses irritation when Twilight brags about the presentation for Celestia's students. It's here that Spike is presented as a straight man who bounces off the illogical approach of the others, which is when his character is at its best. And the lesson that Starlight learns is a very important lesson for her to learn. She's told that while she wanted to succeed in her lesson, it wasn't a lesson that her teacher had in mind. She took Twilight's words the wrong way and unknowingly gave herself a hard time. It's explained to Starlight that instead of thinking about finishing an activity, she should think about the people that she's doing it with. That is the true meaning behind the teamwork that she was trying to do her chores with. It's followed up by a reasonably sound conclusion where Starlight apologizes and admits to her insecurities. Of course, the others accept her apology, help clean up the mess, and spend the rest of the day chillaxing. Whatever that even means. Every little thing she does is a basic episode with a basic pace, but it's still a nice way to keep the season going. It's not great, but still good. It's an episode that I just might see again sometime soon. Miss Anthropony, over and out. So, how long do we sit quietly? <laughs> Yeah. Destruction of your soul.